Hello and welcome to the Heimo Scheuch podcast. Well, obviously, I'm not Heimo Scheuch, but today I have the pleasure to ask Heimo Scheuch questions about the new year and also how he starts into the new year. So, Heimo, thanks for having me here. I'm really looking welcome, forward. Welcome, Nick. Great to have you here and happy new year, first happy of all. Happy new year to you too. Well, Heimo, I think it's, it's very interesting because you're actually responsible for around 18,000 people around the world, uh, I think in 29 countries, as CEO of Wienerberger. And I was asking myself the question, how do you prepare for a year, for a new year? What do you do at the end of the year? How do you start and how do you prepare for all this responsibility and all the tasks you're going to have now? I think, Nick, it's um, a matter of, um, I would call it, uh, not to be too exaggerated about calendar years because actually we are used so much to 12 months 365 days and there becomes then the discussion the year ends and the new year starts but at the end of the year of the day we actually go through yeah it's it's not that everything changes i'm actually appalled and um, with with uh, a strange uh, effect of uh, thinking I, I listen to the radio stations uh, in austria and around the world that says we have still six hours left in this crap year and next year is everything perfect i find actually it's a we have a huge opportunity to be on this wonderful planet earth uh, we should enjoy our lives much more we should make uh, everything out of them what's possible we have so much uh, possibilities and so many things that we can do and should be excited about them and that's the i think it's a different philosophical approach and it's the same with uh, with wienerberger we are a company that that uh, are existing now for more than 200 years so a calendar year is all relative to us we plan and think and and uh, put uh, our strategic uh, action in into place for more than one year it's for 30 40 50 years and therefore um, what you need from time to time is to step back and have time for yourself and relax and i do this best in nature that would be my next question how does heimo scheuch step back what did you do you you took maybe took some vacation now i don't know but how can people imagine what do you do in your private life when you're not here or around the world somewhere well it's very simply told and uh, think uh, values matter also in your private life and for me family friends and as i said the nature are very important and to dedicate time to people that you love is the most important thing. And therefore, when it comes to the year end with Christmas and, and the holidays, you tend to spend more time with, with them. Uh, more time means not fighting with them and not uh, sort of uh, quarreling with them, but uh, sitting together and exchanging ideas, taking a walk, for example, or just, you know, talking about the things that uh, uh, concern us. And this is, uh, with friends and family, a very nice thing. I spent, for example, in, the, in my home uh, region in Carinthia, the, the, the holidays and the year end, And it's lovely to be on the mountains and, and sit there with friends in the sun and discuss for hours, uh, not day-to-day -day things, but uh, life in general and, and having also a good laugh and joke and, and enjoy a good glass of, uh, of Prosecco or of wine and eat something nice. And this is the quality of life that matters. When we talk about family and friends, What values in people do you really treasure? What is important for you that people have? Which values should they have? I think when you experience tough times and everybody uh, uh, does this in his life and I had uh, tough times also, uh, when you look at uh, your professional challenges, your private challenges, you need to, to have uh, good friends that uh, not only respect you, that you can trust in, that are there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, in these difficult times uh, to discuss things, to have uh, the feeling that they care about you is the best uh, thing in, world, in, in your life and in the world. And therefore you need uh, also to show that you are there for them. 
And uh, as I said earlier, time is everything. Dedicating time to your friends, to the people as such, and to the common cause is a very important matter these days, especially in times like the pandemic, where we have uh, unfortunately uh, been in a situation where we got uh, more into a separation, uh, in isolation, and, and where people didn't get interact so much. So it's very, care you need to be careful and you need to put a lot of emphasis in this social aspect again in order to create relationships and maintain them. I recently read an article about you in an Austrian daily newspaper where you said most one of the most dangerous things right now are the fear and also the psychological problems that people have. And it's also that kind of separation of the society. How do you think people can cope with that challenge in their life, fear? Well, I think, Nick, we need uh, pretty quickly to get out of this discussion about COVID, uh, because uh, every time you get together and you will experience the same thing, I think uh, in a group of people, it doesn't take long that people talk about it. Yeah, about the side effects, about the direct effects, about the risks, about the fear. I just had a conversation with very nice friends in Upper Austria, and they said to me, we can't plan anything anymore. Because we don't know when there's the lockdown, we can't know when we, when can, when we go to our biking tour, we, can, we don't know when we can go on vacation. And then another friend who is a, 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 leading, um, a leading doctor uh, in Austria, he said, you know, I was so surprised because I, um, I spoke with my, my little daughter and uh, she said, I asked her, are you okay? And she said, yes, I'm okay. And uh, do you have worries? And she said, yes, I, I worry every Thursday because then we do, we do the test. The test meaning the, the PCR test. And if I am negative, I can't go to school. And isn't that traumatic, actually? And that's what I meant when I spoke with the journalists, that there are so many side effects in our life um, that I consider to be very risky. And we need to find together again and not be separated more and more as a society. And this is something where we have to work on. And I try to reflect a lot uh, during this year end and the beginning of this year when you have a, uh, a nice walk in the mountains. How can you do it also inside the company, for example? Because we are in 30 different countries, people are in different locations. So communication is everything. And I think the common cause to do something good for the planet and for the people is what Wien, at Wienerberger matters. And as I said, the values, respect, trust are very important pillars of such uh, communication and working together. When we talk about Wienerberger and the 29 countries I think you are in, and we're talking about separation of society, isn't it even worse in 29 countries when you're actually responsible for employees in 29 countries? Or is it all, all everywhere the same, actually, the same fears, the same problems they have with this situation? Human beings are very much the same. I mean, they have the cultural background uh, that also differs from climate zones and, uh, and other sort of uh, influences. But uh, obviously, all of us have a certain fear, fear about the future, fear about our health, fear about our friends and, and beloved ones. So these common things are everywhere the same. So you need to give, and I think this is what people need to learn who have a certain responsibility, politically, economically, financially, to give back this uh, sort of uh, good feelings, good vibes to the people, trust in the future, believe in the future. Today when you look at the media, television, social media, um, also radio stations. When you turn up the news, it's only a catastrophe. Yeah, things happen there, things happen there. Positive news is not so, is not that, um, doesn't make the headlines. Yeah, but there are so many good things out there that we should talk more about and give confidence to the people that we can cope with these situations. Yeah? I mean, it's a very dramatic situation, COVID. It's not to be underestimated. But we can manage. We have learned to manage, actually, in a company, in, in a state, everything. Sometimes better, sometimes worse, but we actually can cope with it. And to your question, Nick, I think from this aspect, we have different um, exposures in different countries and they deal with it differently. So the problems are a little different from country to country. But at the end of the day, 
it's about people and we care about them and this matters to us. Mm -hmm. You were saying just before that friends of you uh, really missed planning things. Is Heimo Scheich uh, a man who, who is a real planner of his private life? Or are you? do you also believe in coincidences? Or do you meet people just out of a certain feeling right now? Or, or, or are your weekends planned? You know, I, I know you're in Corinthia, then you, you have this wonderful dog in Corinthia. Is, is everything planned? I just like to get a feeling about that. Uh, Nick, uh, that's the privilege of a certain age. I'm not considering myself as old, but if you were, had asked me the question probably 15 years ago, I would say I'm very spontaneous. I decide on a Friday what I do on the yeah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. But as you get a little older and responsibility grows in your life, then you need to plan a little bit ahead at least. So yes, I do plan and this, is, this is, works then better for me because then I can uh, really take better advantage of my time. Yeah, and also I can integrate other people better in this in this life. Yeah, and uh, this goes for my my beloved dog also when I say that, and also for my family especially when you have a sort of a really planning a little bit behind. However, and this is uh, goes without saying, I like to be spontaneous. I like to go out and meet people and. Uh, um, not to plan everything in advance, but as we all know, everybody is busy and, and it gets more and more difficult to get them together. And that's why you need to plan. And you really like to cook planned and unplanned. I do. Um, I think uh, one of the, of the greatest things in life is, is food and, and, and cooking and eating. And to do it together with, again, with friends and, and, and family is one of the greatest uh, things that you can do because you create something. Yeah? It is this aspect of creation and sharing. Yeah? And this is, I think, uh, if you do it in a way where it's relaxed and where you have time. And uh, as I said, we were, for example, on the 31st of December sitting to, uh, together in a mountain hut and just everybody brought something yeah mm -hmm. it's you know it's a cheese it's bread and it's a little sort of uh, drink then we were sitting outside in the sun and just just enjoying it and that's the moment that is important and the sharing is it also when you get older that the moment gets more and more important do you do you think that i think you appreciate the moment more okay. yeah it's the more the moment is always important Yeah, but uh, you consider that this is a, a, a great moment that you enjoy more because you know it is there, and you you don't you do you see also that it is something that does good to you, and then you exactly enjoy it also in the way you should enjoy it. Yeah. Is it part of your success to be really present in the moment? Um, I've, I must say, uh, yes, it's something where you need to be uh, not dreaming about the future alone or, uh, or being melancholic about the past. It's um, taking this experience with you and then preparing yourself for the future. This is what it is. But you live here and in the now. And the action to do things, to be active, is, I think, something where you have also um, a sort of positive life attitude, yeah? because there you can create, you can do things, you can enjoy the moment. What are the, what are the things in your life which give you the most strength or which really help you uh, believe in this positive side of life? Well, I think the, from my perspective, first of all, to have uh, time out in the nature helps me a lot. I grew up in the mountains, so for me the mountains have a strong uh, force. So, you know, when you walk, for example, now in the snow and you enjoy the, the sun rising in the morning or going down in the evening or being out there and looking at animals, walking in the forest and, and enjoying here the, the scenery, these are things that are extraordinary in the sense of what they give to you and to breathe uh, the air up there the fresh one is obviously giving you a lot of force and energy yeah? um, but it's not these moments alone of solitude and where you can relax and 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 uh, sort of uh, get uh, get yourself uh, uh, rooted and grounded but it's also then the time that you share together with others yeah and as i said it's very important also to integrate Uh, friends in in this and share it with them because this obviously offers you immensely um, in the sense of 
communication, exchange of ideas, but also gives you the energy of life. Apropos energy of life, where are the the places, really places in the world, which are places for you, which give you energy, which give you life, which give you perspective? Are there any very special, except Corinthia, where you come from? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I've, I've spent uh, most of my time in different countries, um, from the US to Europe, and they're also in very different cultures and settings on the countryside, in city centers. Um, I must say, the most I learned in Asia with, uh, with philosophers and people who actually work and think differently. Because uh, when you go and walk around India, there's no, literally no place where you don't see anybody. Because everywhere, some, in, in the most remote areas of India, you come across somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah? And therefore, an Indian philosopher told me once, you know, that's why we have invented yoga. Because actually you need to uh, come to your calmness and you need to relax in the place where you are. And it must be independent and from, from what you actually wish. Because it's obviously easy to sit alone on the beach and look at the sunset and you feel great. Yeah. You can do it in Goa, yeah. but you can do it also in the Adriatic Sea. Yeah. Yeah? However, if you are in the center city of Delhi, mm -hmm. Mumbai or Bangalore, and you are there in the, in the traffic, mm -hmm. there to relax is actually the most uh, uh, or the highest achievement of relaxation and if you get into yourself and spiritually calm down. And I think to answer your question, obviously I have my preferences. As I said, I, I like to be in the mountains, I like to be on the seaside as well, or in the country. There are, there, are, um, there are beautiful parks also in cities, for example, or um, I like architecture, I like music, I like to go to a theater. So there's a lot of things that you can do in your life, but it's living in the moment, as you said earlier, and enjoying this, yeah, and being relaxed and really devote your energy to this speci specific moment. What was in your life the most important thing you learned? You were talking about the philosopher, the Indian philosopher, but what would you consider the most valuable uh, thing that you learned in your life and by whom did you learn it? I think uh, there are different phases and uh, the, I would start with the following. When you grow up on the country, in the countryside, you learn from your family, father, mother and, and, and ancestors and how they work, um, uh, how they work the ground if it's in the forestry or in the agriculture, that you do it with respect and that you owe something to nature and you can't only take away from it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we learned when I'm, I was growing up in the, in the really rural parts uh, there. So for us, it, it was important to work the ground to get, get them the results. And you see the results years later. If you plant a tree, then you don't see that the, uh, the tree grows in two weeks. Yeah. You see it in 50, 60 years. And I still remember, oh, I've planted these trees with my grandfather, for example. So this is a nice sort of uh, way of seeing sustainability happening. Yeah. And this respect to nature, I think, is the first great step in a life because you understand that all comes from a certain work and respect to nature. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, to be humble in life and to be honest are two things that are also very much linked to this way of life. Because you need to work hard to get to something and you need to be obviously straightforward and transparent to the others. Yeah? And these are things that I think are very important when you grow up as values, yeah? respect, trust, etc. Um, when I when I would sort of step make a long step then and and refer to your question, a very important uh, one was forgiveness. Okay. Yeah, because you need to uh, you experience a lot when you travel, when you go abroad and work in different cultures and different systems. Uh, you are exposed to a lot of uh, um, I would say unfortunate events also where you think that it is not appropriate, that the reaction or the action of other people were not the right ones or they should have done differently. And therefore you are sometimes are angry mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't go so far that you hate somebody for it, but you're very angry, and you consider this as unjust and and not appropriate. And then to learn that you need to forgive mm -hmm. uh, is something which uh, is very important. Love and forgiveness are some things that are very core in the human in our human uh, relationship. And I must say, I'm I'm going every year uh, now for 20 years to a very holy place in Greece. That's the Mount Athos, where I spent a couple of weeks every year. And there, the monks learned me that the forgiveness is obviously one of the greatest and most difficult um, achievements that you can get in a lifetime. So forgiveness is anger management. It would be too narrow-minded if I call it anger management. Anger management uh, you can do when you drive uh, the car on the roads of Vienna or New York or Paris. Then you can do anger management. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, um, forgiveness is, is uh, something which uh, touches your profound feelings. Yeah? Feelings that you have towards people, uh, towards your, um, your family, towards your friends. And uh, it's important for all of us that we learn that uh, forgiveness needs to be part of it. And some people learn it obviously due to the fact that they have small children mm -hmm. and you need to forgive them mm -hmm. because they learn. And actually it's this nice sort of image that you should keep also when you get older. Mm -hmm. Because you and me, we learn every day. Mm -hmm. And if another um, person forgives us, then we understand that we are learning people. Yeah? And we learn till our last day on this earth. And if we uh, sort of think in this way, act in this way, and respect each other in this way, then a lot of conflicts wouldn't take place. Yeah? And we would learn in a way to live together with respect and sort of to go uh, towards each other and, uh, and uh, learn from each other and try also to forgive for mistakes. If I may say so, for, from a company perspective, uh, for me the culture of mistakes is even more important than the culture of success. Because success comes actually because you have made uh, mistakes. Yeah? You learn from this and then you do it better or you train harder or you change things in a way that you have a better result. And therefore it's so important uh, to first of all allow the mistake and then to forgive it yeah? and not to blame all the, uh, your lifetime the other for the mistake or for the wrongdoing. When in your company, uh, for example, someone make a mix mistake, which and it's, it's a really stupid thing, actually. Yeah? How do you deal with that? So what, uh, what, or what do you expect the other to, to do when someone really makes a big shit? Yeah? Well, Nick, I think the most important thing is, first of all, that the person realizes it and then accepts it. Okay. You know from your life experience that uh, in nearly 80% of, of these cases, first of all, you reject it. Mm -hmm. I have not made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I have not done it. Mm -hmm. That's a logical human reaction. No, it's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for this. Mm -hmm. And this goes up, uh, you know, in the ladder of hierarchy. Yeah, up to the top. And um, even people that run companies say, I'm not, uh, that's others. Look at our political leadership, for example. Mm -hmm. Taking responsibility is not part of their job description, apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is, I think, uh, shows a, a, or gives a very wrong impression yeah? and shouldn't happen, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because if you are really a, a, an important player in a society, you need to show that you assume responsibility and take responsibility and are accountable for it. Yeah? And to introduce this system in a company is very important because human beings tend to reject responsibility immediately and as I said earlier, say I'm not responsible. So first step is to accept it. Yeah? And then obviously it's the consequences. Yeah? Is the consequence uh, that I lose my job? Obviously not. Except it's a very wrong, it's a very, I mean, a, a huge wrongdoing will lead to this. If I steal something or if I betray things or if I have a really uh, unacceptable wrongdoing, 
then obviously then it's not uh, cannot be matched with the company's uh, culture and obviously also with the legal framework. But let's assume you make a, a wrong investment or you make a wrong uh, sort of judgment on the business issue. Yeah, then we need to discuss it. And we, we need to understand why we came to this wrong uh, sort of judgment. And that's, I think, the process as such is important. Yeah? So the first thing is to accept it, to assume it, and then to digest it and to, to think about it. Yeah? These two things will lead then to a healing process in the sense where you say then, okay, understood, I will change my behavior or I will change my thinking, and this will lead us uh, consequently to a better performance at the end of the day. In your position, you have to take a lot of responsibility. Do you think that people in these days now, also in combination with fear and all the stuff which is happening around, don't take enough responsibility for their actions? Um, I would say, first of all, um, we um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a society like the one we live here in Austria, and let's take the Austrian one, we need to be more responsible for ourselves. Yeah? We need to take more responsibility. We can't delegate responsibility so much to the state or other ones because that means then uh, we give ourselves up. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think, very crucial and very important to take, first of all, responsibility for ourselves, mm -hmm. even in difficult moments. We understand, and that's why we have a civilized society, that in certain moments of your life, and not for everybody, fortunately enough, others must take decisions, or other, the state must help, or others. So that's very normal, and that has to do with our sort of cultural backgrounds and, and how we deal with this thing, and I, I'm a strong believer that that is necessary, and that is necessary to help the poorest and to help people that are in need, in real need. But, ex as I said earlier, to help oneself and to be feel responsible it's very important and this responsibility should be uh, encouraged more in our society how should one encourage that how could you encourage someone to take more responsibility well because, I think uh, sorry I, may I add something because it takes courage to take responsibility and if the two values are missing i think it's kind of difficult or isn't it No, I, I, Nick, I don't believe that. I think when, when you take a, sm a child that grows up, first of all, it, it, to a certain extent, it learns to, to walk, to speak, to, to, uh, to do certain things, and, and it's a learning process. And again, everybody has the courage to do things. And then, at a certain stage, we take it away. We who? The system, um, the sort of uh, how we interact with each other. I think this is probably something where we should philosophically think a little bit more about it. Why do we take the responsibility away? Mm -hmm. Schools, universities, education systems, uh, the whole life. Yeah? I think the state interferes in a lot of things, mm -hmm. probably too much and doesn't leave enough room for responsibility for its citizens, for the people as such. Because as I said in my example, the young ones, when they grow up, actually, they don't know what this means. Yeah? They need to experience and need to have the courage to go. Yeah? And then we limit it itself. Yeah? And I think you need to give, that's why I'm a strong believer, you need to give people the access to schooling and education. Very important. Even the poorest. And you need to educate them better. Mm -hmm. Writing and reading is part of your freedom. Mm -hmm. And thinking is the, is the highest degree of freedom. Mm -hmm. If you take it away from them, then obviously you reduce their, cap their capacity to be responsible, to assume responsibility and to be free at the end of the day. Bertha von Sutten, I think, uh, or Marie von Ebner Eschenbach, she said, the less you know, the more you have to believe. So that's yes, um, That's obviously in different contexts true, uh, or it is, is, is a matter of fact. But I think, as I said, learning 
especially in a in an in a world where digital and virtual and all sort of the access to information is free for everybody nearly there we should give them the opportunity to really do so yeah and uh, again if you are intrigued by new things if you are um, you're interested th that's creativity and creativity is so important in this world to create new things to be eager to learn um, as I said earlier for us learning is a continuous process till the old age yeah um, I'm always surprised if people at 50 say I've, I've had my life yeah, it's done. Yeah, it's not very very exciting. No, yeah? not at all. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think this is something where we need to create more positive vibes, mm -hmm. and especially in these times where COVID has forced us to sort of um, isolate ourselves or not to be in a in, in more interaction. Take for example a, a city like Vienna. It's a cultural hub. And culture was actually very much restricted in these last two years. You go around Vienna, you yourself, you like concerts, theatres, opera, music. There's not much going on. And that actually uh, influences us in a great deal. Yeah? And we need to learn to do this more and more and more again. Yeah? And not take it away from us. So for Heimo Scheuch, what are your goals for this year? What are the good vibes you like to create for yourself in this year? No, I think the, the, the good vibes, you know, positive and optimistic I look into this year. Yeah, um, We will always have issues, challenges ahead of us. For me, uh, COVID is a fact. We need to live with it. We need to cope with it. But we shouldn't uh, sort of be desperate and, and frustrated and, and uh, um, fall into a deep depression. Yeah? We should actually be more positive, we should do, go outside, we do, should do our sports, we should be enjoying our lives, we should interact with people more again. And this is something which I would like to sort of uh, uh, tell the people out there, do things. Don't, don't wait for things to happen, do them, yeah? be active. And also the fact that we should engage more in discussions again. Yeah? Not everything is black and white. We need to learn again to challenge ourselves. Therefore, creating a new ideas only come from challenging each other. And not, for, not by saying, you are black and I am white, and there's nothing in between. Yeah? Cohesion in so society is the most important um, aspect for f future development. If we split, that's, that means conflicts and that means actually destruction. So we need to do this. And when you ask me what my, my sort of goals are to bring the company forward, to bring myself forward in the sense of learning, doing new things, experiencing new things, creating new things, growing at the end of the day and actually uh, making people happy. I think that's the perfect last word. Thank you so much for, for having me as your guest host here. And thank you so much for watching our podcast. The next podcast will come already next week. And Heimo Scheuch will have a very special guest. So stay tuned. Thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>